May is here, the sun is starting to shine and the flowers to bloom and there are plenty more games to go in your living room. Do you like my poem? Yes, uh, you're like a modern day yeah. Williams Wordsworth. Yeah. Uh, in, William uh, Wordsworth. Also in the words of poet Mr Timberlake, it's gonna be May. <laughs> it's already May. <laughs> you should have made that joke last month. <laughs> Fans of Surviving and Hey Who Isn't will want to check out State of Decay 2. This is the sequel to 2013 State of Decay, but this visually enticing sequel brings cooperative multiplayer. Your job is to survive in an open world against hordes of, you guessed it, zombies. So I've not played any of the State of Decay what? series. I know, I know, this is a very scary thing to mm. admit amongst Bad. the OX crew. <laughs> You'd be right out of my survival fort. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mike. Unbelievable. We need people who bring survival skills to the table. I can do, survi I can do survival All stuff. Alright, maybe you can stay. But if you get infected, take around the back, bullet to the head. Sorry, them's the rules. And That's them's the rules enough. in State of the Decay 2 as well. Yeah. Well, you can make up the rules, yeah. uh, essentially. So, um, as part of the game, you, c you sort of have different uh, members of your society and stuff. And when they get infected, you're going to have to make some difficult decisions. <laughs> Do you let them stick around? Do you send them off into the wasteland to fend for themselves? Or do you, you know, in the melon? No. Zombles. <laughs> Zombles. The cool thing about State of Decay 2 is, is the co-op, right? Yeah. I mean, like, everyone played the first one and they thought it was a pretty good game, but, you know, it, it felt like the perfect game for co-op yeah. and they didn't have it in there. Yeah. So this, this is going to fix that. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it looks relatively similar. I'm sure there are a bunch of little mechanical tweaks and stuff in there mm -hmm. that will make it good. But um, yeah, it's, just, it's the same sort of state of decay all of us know and love. Yeah. You don't know and love yet. Um, but uh, but we can't. Yeah. Sounds good. Nice. Detroit Become Human is the latest from director David Cage, best known for Heavy Rain, the world's longest and gloomiest quick time event. The plot follows three androids with your choices massively influencing the outcome of the story. Now this has got some like good press, some slightly bad press from right. like scenes that they decided to show and everyone went why did you show that scene yes. and I'm interested to see how they will properly tackle such like delicate subject matters and yeah. stuff. Uh, yes, I'm not uh, the biggest fan of David Cage's games. Um, Jane loves them. <laughs> Jane, 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 Jane loves, Jane loves them. Like, nah. uh, yeah, I really hate them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm entering this with an open mind and an mm. open heart. And also it's sci-fi, which is like one of my favourite genres. Yeah. So uh, I am curious to see how it, how yeah. it plays. Uh, yeah. And I, what I'd really like it and what it seems to promise is you know, a kind of branching storyline that's got a little more depth to it yeah. than, and a little more variety to it than the tell. You know, the Telltale games do a great job, but really, if you go back and play them, you realise mm. that it's mainly nuance rather yeah. than sort of big decisions. Whereas this feels like there's going to be a, a sort of much more complex branching narrative. And yeah. if they can pull that off, then I am fully on board. But, yeah. but I would say to be charitable, David Cage has a a mixed history of getting these things right. Yeah, so. I'll be interested to see. But yeah, so it looks like it's going to be more like things actually affecting the game and less they will remember you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, cautiously optimistic for mm -hmm. this one. Mm -hmm. I will, I'll give it a try, but if it starts with me having to bloody lay the table, I'm going to be <laughs> furious, David Cage, and talk to you. You're not watching, are you? Busy no. man. He's, he's <laughs> Another for the list of great Wii U games that are getting a second airing on Switch, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze sees video games' most kidnap-happy ape fighting alongside his extended family to defeat the Snowmads. I like that he always shows up with his family. He it's quite does. nice, isn't it? Actually, nice it's quite sweet, out. you know. He's yeah. good. He's uh, good. This is supposed to be really good. It's supposed to be really hard as well. It's like a proper old-school, mm. hardcore platformer, which is... I don't think something Nintendo necessarily really do yeah, anymore. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of cool that they, they had this sort of yeah. last And it's one of those games that is going to look just fine on the Switch. Yeah. And will be a, a really good game to, to sort of take on the go. And sort of each kind of self-contained level is something you can sort of smash your head against on the train or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also like that it, there's a second airing to this great pun of Snowmads. Yeah, Snowmads is good. <laughs> I was trying to work out whether Tropical Freeze was a pun, but I don't think it is. I think it's no. just a description. It's yeah. tropical and it's, and it's now cold. frozen. Yeah. So maybe they should have made that more punny. Yeah, yeah. You would say either, yeah. You would say yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, puns are your favourite thing in the world. Pun guns, pew. <laughs> 
God, if they could perfect the pun gun, you'd be, you'd be unstoppable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The famously rock-hard Dark Souls is coming back to haunt us towards the end of the month. With swanky revamped graphics, Dark Souls Remastered is coming to the Switch also, but that version got delayed until later in the summer. So Mike, yes. in your opinion, is this the best in the series? Yes. It's like the original thing. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it depends whether you consider the series to include Bloodborne, that's a debate for another mm -hmm. day, but within the, the Souls series, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the first game's the best. It's, yeah. uh, and it's really nice to see it get a sort of lease of life. I played it with Luke and the, the sort of visual changes are quite subtle. Mm -hmm. If you've played the original game on the PC and you're already running it with the sort of fan patches and 4K resolution and all that stuff, you're not going to be that impressed. But if, like me, you played it originally on the Xbox 360, it's a yeah. really nice sort of graphical upgrade. Everything looks really nice. There's a few really pretty sort of lighting effects and stuff as well. So it's a, absolutely the sort of definitive version mm -hmm. um, of the game. Uh, and it's just a brilliant game. I mean, I've said this many, many times before, but it's uh, one of the best worlds in gaming, um, yeah. which I think is, you know, a lot of people get fixated on the difficulty and the, you know, the combat, which is great. Um, but it's it's a surprisingly in-depth RPG, which I think a lot of people don't realise. And also, the just the world design is is unsurpassed. Obviously, Dark Souls has been hugely influential mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, it, it, other games sort of imitating its its combat style and its its approach to uh, life and death and and you know uh, retrieving your items and stuff like that. Um, but none of them have quite nailed that that sort of atmosphere and the sense of, uh, the, if you, you know, you're, you're sort of skimming across the surface of a really deep sort of lore mm -hmm. that you don't ever really get to fully sort of dive into. So it leaves a lot to the imagination as well. And it's just yeah. really, really beautifully sort of uh, crafted in terms of a, a world and a universe. And it's well worth exploring. Like a fine wine. Yes, delicious. And also it will get you hammered in yeah. the face <laughs> with a big hammer. Sega is once more plundering its own back catalogue with a new Mega Drive Classics collection of retro games, or Genesis Collection for US viewers. The roster of titles is similar to that of the collection released for the Xbox 360 and PS3, but with a few rarer additions like Gunstar Heroes or Wonder Boy in Monster World. The cool thing as well with this collection right. is that you can play online. So okay. Streets of Rage yeah. online multiplayer. Yeah, I feel like I've bought Streets of Rage on just about every, every platform that has platform. ever existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, barring the SNES, because obviously yeah. never, the, never the twain shall meet. <laughs> uh, we don't talk about that console war. It's too, too real, man. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. They're all Mega Drive games, aren't yeah. they? You know, I feel, I've already got the Mega Drive collection on the 360. I don't mm -hmm. feel like this is going to add much to the the recipe but yeah. uh, online play is fun but will you really be able to find anyone else to play <laughs> with we're a bit annoyed at Oxtra that it's not on switch yeah right that, that would see that would make sense right portable versions perfect. that's that's cool but like i am not not so bothered about playing it on my xbox one <laughs> having already played on my xbox 360 and probably my yeah. original xbox as well yeah. also no echo the dolphin what the hell well it's because it's rubbish Cultist Simulator has you seeking unholy mysteries and summoning alien gods in a title described as a game of apocalypse and yearning. In more practical terms, it's a virtual tabletop game that's all about keeping your health and cash flow in order while researching deeper into a spooky story. Our pal Johnny, uh, over a Eurogamer, who is also our DM in mm -hmm. Dungeons & Dragons, said that this is like operating a whole load of microwaves all at once. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird this one. It's oh, um, spinning plates. Yeah, it, it, so basically, uh, it, it starts off with a kind of blank table, and you yeah. have cards, and and then sort of uh, things that you can insert cards into. The thing about the the things you can insert cards into, there's probably a technical term for that, um, <laughs> is that they all have kind of timers and things. So uh -huh. um, there's a lot of time pressure in kind of trying to to sort of satisfy all these different elements that you have to. And it, it sort of starts small, but then builds up and builds up. But what it's doing at the same time is it's writing a story, which yeah. is quite cool. Like it's a really interesting approach to, to storytelling. And you, you know, so say if you've got like work to do, that might be a, a sort of, you know, your way to earn money. You can do that either with a, a particular job. So like working as a hospital porter or whatever, or you can put the, your um, passion card in there instead. So maybe you sell paintings instead Aww. and get funds that way. So it's kind of a branching narrative and it gets real weird, real quick. It also got a lot of love at res yeah. as well. So. I think it's it, it's really, it's a good game for a show like res because it, 
very quickly escalates. So it starts off small and easy to, to kind of manage. And then, as Johnny says, the kind of microwave thing happens where you've got a load of timers and your health deteriorating and you need funds and, you know, this is happening and you're just... <laughs> It's a nightmare. The whole point of microwaves is they make <laughs> cooking easy, not more complicated. You shouldn't have to do all the things at once. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, I'm gonna go home and have a single microwave meal. <laughs> and drown my sorrows in macaroni cheese, <laughs> as usual. Forgotten Anne is a Ghibli-esque anime adventure with hints of puzzles and platforming. You'll explore the Forgotten Lands, a place inhabited by Forgotlings, which are creatures made out of mislaid objects. And this looks like really, really pretty, but also really creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we actually have a video on Outside Xbox yes. of Andy and Jane playing this, I think. Uh, and yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful yeah. looking game. Um, I, I don't know if the, I've really got a sort of sense of how much depth there is yeah. to it at the moment, but it's got a kind of, it's a semi-puzzle game, semi-platformer, you know, it's got kind of story elements and things like that. But yeah, it just looks visually very, yeah. very arresting. Um, although it throws me into a wild rage every time I see that they've spelt it Forgotten. It's not, for, <laughs> it's not Forgotten Anne, it's Forgotten Anne. And I assume the Forgotten Land, which I don't understand why they've done that. And it just, every time I look at it, it makes me angry. Well, it's, 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 <laughs> It's forgot on Anne, so she was giving you a piggyback and then you went, oh gosh. Right. Well, that explains it. <laughs> I take back all of my criticisms. The second expansion to Destiny 2 is out this month, following on from Curse of Osiris at the end of last year. Warmind sends you into Hellas Basin on Mars in search of sweet new exotics. Plus a new horde mode called the Hive Escalation Protocol, in which you and your pals face off against waves of the ancient Hive race. So, Destiny 2. Apparently it's still a thing. Yeah. Um. Everyone, <laughs> everyone was talking about playing Destiny all the time, from what yeah. I could tell. And all the raids and all the Vault of Glass yeah. and all that kind of stuff. No one is talking about Destiny 2, as far as I can tell. Yeah, is anyone was, playing it? There was a huge rush when it first came out, loads of people played it, really enjoyed it, yeah. liked the improvements upon the original game. There's like more of the single player stuff, mm -hmm. really good. And then it's just all gone a bit quiet. Yeah. I think because just like so many other games around. Did they right get now. something wrong? Did they like, it, does it just not have the lasting power of the previous one? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Anyway, they're still pumping out those expansions for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one takes you to Mars, which looks yeah. very nice. If you're not yeah. still playing Destiny, it's unlikely to tempt you back. You never know, yeah. You never know. You, you have to really like Mars, like <laughs> really like it. Those are just some of the games coming your way this mm. month. Which one are you most intrigued Dark Souls by? Dark Souls Remastered. Yeah, yeah, well. I'm not intrigued by it. I know exactly what I'm getting. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, If I was to play something else, if you were to force me at gunpoint to play something else this May, probably stay at Decay 2. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, Forgotten Anne is interesting mm -hmm. to me. Also, one that we've not on the, put on the list because we've already talked about it loads on this channel. Uh, Little Nightmares is coming to Switch. Oh, cool. So if you haven't played that on PS4, I suggest You know what, I haven't actually, so I think the Switch would be a really good place to play mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what are you most excited for? Let us know in the comments below. And uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Go check out our side Xbox as well. If you They're like. cool. If you like. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.